So we just finished <laughs> watching VHS 94, which is currently streaming on Shutter as of the 6th, not the 5th. I guess I got my information wrong there somehow, but the sites I was looking at said the 5th. It's the 6th. Whatever. We were up last night trying to watch this, and it wasn't on, so we ended up watching There's Someone in Your House, which was not good. No. And we were pretty disappointed because yeah. this is what we were expecting to watch yesterday, but here it is today. We got to it. We watched it. Uh, of course, I've seen all three of the previous installments. She saw two. I had her skip viral because it's very skippable. Mm. Uh, we'll get to it eventually one day. But this one definitely had me intrigued. Uh, Brad Miska returns as the creator from Bloody Disgusting as well as David Bruckner, who is an executive producer, and we get some familiar faces with Simon Barrett and also Timo, however the hell you say his last name, the director of The Night Comes For Us, as well as the best VHS segment, uh, Safe Haven from VHS 2. Um, so, yeah, this definitely was, was intriguing to me. And then we watched the trailer during my uh, upcoming horror movies, projects, television series mm -hmm. of uh, October 2021. And the trailer was really, really promising. Mm -hmm. Real dark, crazy. Mm -hmm. Shit was pretty wild in it. So that really, really got me excited for it. And so with this one, we get yet another wraparound. Unfortunately, yet another slightly pointless wraparound i didn't really care much for this wraparound no. it's really but um it really is the only weak thing in the film uh everything else is very enjoyable um and we'll get there we'll kind of go segment by segment mm -hmm. here in a minute but um so it starts with that and i've kind of grown accustomed to the vhs franchise kind of having throwaway Wrap arounds for me personally. I, mm -hmm. I just found this to be very blah and whatever, and it was just there to introduce the segments. Which, at this point, I don't even know if I need. I don't mm. need it. I, it's like just just do the segments, and then the movie <laughs> ends. Like yeah, it, like if your wrap around doesn't have any kind of driving force of plot or intrigue, I I don't know. The one in the second movie. Mm. I guess it can kind of be creepy, I like but it, it serves no purpose yeah. to me. The second, the second movie though, the wraparound was a lot better than this one for sure. Like it, it was creepy, and I felt like the acting in it was great, but the acting in this one like at the end was hor was horrible. I felt even in the beginning, honestly. Really? Yeah, I thought it was the weakest acting in in the entire film. Definitely. So. Well, okay. I grew up watching anthology movies like the Amicus anthologies, um, as well as many others, and even take something like uh, Tales from the Hood or something. Um, the anthology wraparounds, like typically that I had watched in the past. I don't know, there was something to them. It mm. felt like a story was being told mm. and that the segments accompanied that story. You know? And with these, I just don't feel like that. Mm. I feel like they're just there to introduce the segments and, and little else. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I just find the VHS wraparounds to be pointless. Uh, but anyway, so that being said, uh, we did get our first... Uh, story here which was about the rat man uh, in the sewers mm -hmm. and there's this uh, investigatorial journalist mm -hmm. who's out there trying to win her Pulitzer <laughs> and uh, so she, she's digging deep down into the sewers mm -hmm. looking Getting for nice the rat man um, and they make their way into the sewers which is a big fucking mistake yeah as it usually is yeah. in horror movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't like what they find. No. Not at all. No. But we did. <laughs> we did. We, we liked, liked what it. they find. Um, so, now, 
This is gonna be spoiler free to a degree. Mm. Um, or not. You mm. know what? Let's just do spoilers. We liked it. Uh, definitely watch it. It's on Shutter. We're gonna move into spoiler territory now. But the first one is about the Rat Man. The second one is about the. Uh, what's the second one? The second one was the. Um, oh my god! <laughs> Why did I forget it when you did too? The third one's the experiment. The yeah. fourth one is the like yokels out with. Uh, I don't want to say what it is because that might be spoiler territory. And then, oh, the, the, second, the second one was, was great as well. That was the funeral home. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, the week. That was really cool. Yeah. That was really cool. Can that was directed that. by Simon Barrett, who just did a movie called Seance, um, which is actually a pretty cool film. Uh, that was his directorial debut. And I'm assuming this is the second thing he directed, or maybe he directed it before it. Uh, and they just didn't release it till now. But... Uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing from him. He was a good writer. I mean, he wrote all the Adam Wingard movies, like You're Next and The Guest and movies I love. So, uh, a good writer and, and his segment here is cool. But, like usual, uh, I shouldn't say like usual two times now, but as expected, how about that? Timo did make the best segment in the fucking film um, with the experiment one. The subject. Yeah. The subject, yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, that one was that one was very Amazing. hardcore Henry, very Hotel Inferno, first person, mm -hmm. uh, chaos, you know, soldiers fighting things and and then being torn apart and blown up and great stuff. Yeah. So, anyways, we'll move into spoilers now. So, if you haven't seen the movie, adios. Um, so the first segment, now, as I said, the, the wraparound for me is, is kind of pointless. Yeah. I, I don't really have much to say about it. White girl or, or white girls, girls in white suits fucking shit up was what the girl said. Uh, yeah. The ending That's was so, so weak and yeah. so silly. Yeah. I didn't like it at and all. And the acting honestly. in that end segment was off. I mean, dreadfully off. Yeah. But I, let's move on from that. I mean, we don't need to talk about that shit. <laughs> So we get our first one here, the Rat Man. Mm -hmm. So I think the main thing to talk about in this is the look mm -hmm. of Rodima. 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 Rotman. What was that? Rotman. No. Rotman. <laughs> no. Wasn't it Rodima? Probably was. I think it was Rodima. Yeah. Anyway, um, what did you think of the look? He looked great. Yeah. It was really creepy. It kind of looked like he had. It was like he had a human face, sort of. Yeah. That, on the end. and then on the end, like where his snout would be. Yeah. And I thought that looked really cool, and it was really creepy. I don't know what it is that he's spitting up that's like burning them. Yeah. Like melting the flesh off of people, but that was really cool, and yeah, he looked great. I thought he looked awesome. He looked like he looked like a xenomorph to me from Alien. Yeah. yeah. He, he also kind of looked like um, you know, those books that were like the the kids like. Um, changing into different animals. You know what I'm talking about? I forget the name mm -hmm. of those book series. Well, anyway, somebody out there knows. I forget the name, but it's like the covers have them like going from human to like beaver or something, and it just looks really corny and weird. But this looked great, but it kind of reminded me of that, you know, in a way. Yeah, I mean, I definitely had a creep factor to a degree with this one, but mm. this one was successful almost completely off of two things. The look of the rat man and the ending mm -hmm. of her vomiting on her co-anchor's yeah. face and it just dissolving and yeah. his eye falling out and all that shit. That was, that was great. So it's really, mostly this segment is dependent upon its practical yeah. effects and the application within. The rest of it's fine. I mean, the characters are fine. Yeah. There's like, not a lot that we get with them, but I, I agree with you. It's short. It's Yeah, it's definitely very short, so we don't really get to know them that much. But the ending is so cool. With both of his eyes hanging out, like, that yeah. was that was really awesome. Yeah. And the practicals were just, yeah. Yeah, everyone's good in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, nothing oh, no, against nothing anybody. Against it's just... There's not a lot yeah. to be done there. Um, they meet this guy who's like outside of it with like a full assault rifle. Yeah. I don't know if he's just keeping him in there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But after seeing Ratman, I'm glad that guy's out there. I wonder if he's, yeah, he's, maybe he's guarding them like for them. Why are those guys covered in black 
but they're not covered in the black sludge. Although that one dude does start, I guess once he you're... He starts like vomiting it. Yeah, once you're like initiated or whatever. Yeah, you're picked, chosen Yeah. by so, Ratama. But they're, you know. they're covered in shit. Like that's just sewage that they're you covered in. You think so? In. Yeah. Not the shit 100%. coming out of their mouth? No. They're I not think like that's immune just... to it because it's not burning your mouth when it's coming out. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I thought they were just covered in sewage, to be Black. honest. But then, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. But, yeah, I mean, cool segment. I mean, yeah. not a ton going on, but loving seeing mm-hmm. uh, Rodimo, which I would think would be probably in the trailer for a half a second or probably, something. But yeah. I, I, it was so fast mm-hmm. that I didn't really attach myself to anything visually. I just saw the cool shit and then kind of <laughs> forgot about it. Yeah, I don't remember seeing him, but he probably was in the trailer. Yeah. Um, anything more on that one? No, I, I liked it a lot though. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Next up, we have the uh, the what was it called? Like the I think it was called like the wake or it was like, yeah, I at the fun- oh. it wasn't like the funeral. Oh, home. the funeral, the funeral, the funeral. I, I think it something was like that. The we don't know what the anyway. fucking yeah, we don't know what they're called. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> the only one I know is the subject for sure. Okay. So, in this one, we have this girl who's sitting at a wake. She works there. Yeah. It's, I don't know if it's like her first one she's ever done or whatever. I kind of got that impression. So, I, I don't know how wakes work as far as like through the night during a storm. Yeah. Like that Neither just seems unrealistic <laughs> to me. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of stuff in this is unrealistic, so I guess it doesn't matter, but. I wasn't aware that Wakes went yeah. all night and she was like, call me in the morning. Like, she's spending the night there. She, yeah. Whatever. So, this guy dies and uh, they're holding his wake and uh, sh- this guy shows up and is doing a, a chant. Some He's kind of a ritual, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Is it him that That's brings bringing, him back? It seems like it. Or is he just like praying? Mm. I have to assume it's him. Yeah. But we do hear we do hear sirens, which I think is yes. actually weather. Yes. Right. But that was so scary when they go off. It's but like, doesn't she hear? I mean, she hears shit before he comes. She hears like movement and stuff. So if yeah. if he's already alive in there, that doesn't really hold. So there was a part. There was some part of dialogue that somebody said that was kind of explaining. It was it was her, the friend that she called. And she was like, oh, he was on the front page. Like, I didn't have to look in the obituary. Yeah, I missed that. There was something that she said in there about why he was, like, on the roof of something or on an overpass or whatever that he was, like, t- mumbling something and yeah, then he jumped, I guess. So Some I, information. It's some need. information that I think was necessary. And I kind of feel like that he was also doing some kind of spell to bring himself back to life, which would maybe explain why he was sort of starting to move. And then the guy that shows up, I, I do think he has some impact on him, like, fully coming back. And, um... Just based on his like hand movements and he's, yeah, I don't know what language he's speaking in. It was hard to hard to hear him, but maybe Latin. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't um, know either. Um, but yet again, kind of like the last segment. This one, this one is solely successful for me off of the look mm-hmm. of yeah. the dead body, it was and so cool. he's missing the whole top of his head. Um, but like some part of his face is still intact Mm -hmm. and this just looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not really honestly sure how they did it. I don't know if it was CG. I don't know if it was practical. I I honestly can't tell, but whatever it was, it was, it was pretty damn impressive. And like he turns around and his hand falls off. Oh man. Yeah. Like he's just, he's just this mutilated corpse that's being held together by Mm -hmm. fucking duct tape. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I mean when he when he starts falling apart and then like his innards start uh-huh. coming out and that was all fucking great. Yes. I mean this this these are these are cool little scary stories that feel like urban legends, mm-hmm. you know. And that's kind of what I want out of this. Mm-hmm. This one felt the most like a, you know, a scary story to tell yeah. in the dark. Yeah. You know. Um because the next two are much bigger. Yes. Uh, yeah. And this one's very small scale. Mm-hmm. And it's really just a girl dealing with a dead body. Mm-hmm. Coming back and then attacking her. Now, is she alive at the end? I didn't think she was based on how she was moving. 
I mean, it's possible that she somehow survived and was just kind of like shell shocked and was stumbling out there. And I think it's kind of meant to be inter- like an open interpretation with that. He only had one hand and no eyes and no head. Yeah, but she was like, scared and. How do you, you kill know. her? Just strangle her? <laughs> yeah, with one hand. His fingers probably were falling off as he was trying <laughs> to strangle her. I don't know. I don't know how he would have killed her, but. I'm not sure. It, I, I kind of thought she was dead, but I think it's possible that she wasn't. I don't know because it, it, I don't know if that means he's a zombie then. Like if she's dead, if he like yeah, bit I don't her, know if like she's whatever. Supposed to be a zombie, but she he didn't have a mouth to bite. No, but his little like piece half. of his face was on the ground, was and really the cool. eye was looking around, Ooh. and his hand was crawling across the ground yeah. like thing from the Adams family. And that's like what scared her the most too. That's what like made well, that's her what, yeah, yell, scream. and then he was like, I guess he still had one ear uh-huh, in order to hear her, yeah. to hear her. He looked great. He looked really cool. I really like his reveal, too, that he's, like, standing against the wall, and you see the half of his head that's intact, and then when he turns, it's just the diagonal. Yeah. That looked awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one, it was cool. But there was, there was a couple moments where we were a little unsure, like, where the camera... Yeah, how the camera was moving. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, she I, must have been carrying it. Yeah. It just... That's that's all the explanation I got for that one, but... Mm-hmm. It's cool. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Uh, and then next up, we've got... Subject. Now, this one kind of starts off a little slower. Mm-hmm. You're waiting for things to get going. Um, this guy's doing these experiments on these on these kids, and they're like, uh, he's some revered genius, uh, human. Like he can blend human and mechanics mm-hmm. together, um, and so this is what he's doing. And he uh, makes these freaks of nature. This is very, very reminiscent of a movie called Frankenstein's Army, which is actually another found footage film. Um, with these creations, these insane creations that these that this guy is coming up with. And then they're out there killing everyone mm-hmm. in the movie. Um, as I said, if you haven't seen Hotel Inferno or Hardcore Henry or... I, I didn't care for, honestly, Hotel Inferno 2 or 3, uh, unfortunately, all that much. But if you like that style of the first person with tons of fucking action and kills and insanity, then Hardcore Henry and uh, Hotel Inferno are definitely um, my go-to recommendations after watching this. It had, had that much feel. Uh, Hardcore Henry is a full feature-length film. Um Hotel Inferno is as well, but it's much shorter. It's only like 60 minutes long. Um, it felt a, even. It felt a little bit more like Hotel Inferno, honestly. But uh, yeah, I mean, once it gets going, it gets going. Yes. I mean, I can't imagine that. I don't know how these segments are done. I don't know what, like, how they allocate the funds. Like, I don't know mm. if they like give certain directors more money. Mm. Or if the directors themselves produce their own work and submit it, or I don't know, because it definitely feels like Timo was given the most money. Yeah. Like, or he just knows how to use it. Right. Yeah. I don't know either, but it would be cool to find out how how the money is allocated. Um, but yeah, the, it, the the creatures that we see in this are are big and spectacular. And the gore effects and the stunt work um, is all really is all really impressive. Mm. Now, some of it, of course, looks um, fake or composited to a degree, mm. uh, and there is some CG blood splatter, which I'm not a huge fan of. But I think it's so successful in so many areas that I'm willing to look past any you know, quote unquote flaws Mm -hmm. that I saw within because I'm just here to have a good time. Yeah. You know, this isn't supposed to be some Marvel blockbuster (laughs) where, you know, the CG is, is, uh, you know, innovative and, and kind of like pushing the boundaries Mm -hmm. of what's possible. Yeah. This is VHS 94. Yeah. You know, we're lucky that, they can even make it look decent yeah. with, I'm sure, the budget that they're working with. So, I, with knowing the limitations of these filmmakers, I'm always impressed by what they're able mm-hmm. to achieve. Um, and yeah, I mean, 
it's really just this one is more this one's all about the, the action and the chaos and, and whatnot. But the, this is a this is a real tragic one, right? This is this this is Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was really tragic. I felt so bad for the girl and I mean the noises that she was making. Yeah, it was like distorted. So cool. It was they like, had distorted kind of like electronic noises and mm. just like her whimpering and trying to understand and like you know she doesn't know what's been done to her and how terrifying that would be because it's like you know the misunder the misunderstood monster like she's not really a monster but she kind of gets pushed to that point because yeah. people are trying to kill her so what is she gonna do but fight back but. Um, yeah, it's really sad. It was really sad. So I realized I didn't turn airplane mode on, so I don't even know if the audio from... The first half. <laughs> the first half is usable. We'll find out, and I'll be really pissed off, because that'll be a total waste of time. And then we'll just go do a spoiler-free discussion for about five minutes and be done with it. Aww. So... We'll see. Frankenstein's monster. Yes. Tragic. Yeah. Super yeah. sad. She looked great. Um, I was saying before we stopped that I, I didn't really feel bad for the... Uh, arm guy the the man monster because he's a man yes sexist yeah no because i i don't know i mean he was like fully monster by that point like she still kind of retained some of her humanity and then you know we didn't really like talk to him though we didn't yeah we don't know we don't know i know but like he kind of just goes comes out guns blazing what about the girl with all the Um, mechanical innards oh my god that was awful and the little like the t- hello. Oh, that was hello? so creepy. And she just runs from it. It's like that that thing is just in that room forever. Yeah, I feel sad for her for I sure. I feel really bad. Yeah, and that's yeah. kind of like the you know like the mad scientist leaving behind his failed experiments that still have um, like you know consciousness, and that sucks because like what are they gonna do? The leader of the SWAT team turned into a real fucking monster at the end. He for was sure. so scary. That was really. Really freaky to see him, you know, bashing her head in. And, um, and then you have the little video journalist yeah. who tried to be the hero and yeah. ended up getting himself uh, disfigured and then yeah. uh, ultimately killed. But she survives. Yes. Um, uh, so where is she going to go? I don't know. But I mean, the ending. kind of fucked. I loved the ending of him looking over at her dying and then her battery is dying so they kind of die looking at each other and then it cuts to the security camera and they're both laying there and then the jump cut of her kind of walking around like i thought that looked so cool so what happened she like her battery recharges while she sleeps i was wondering what that what that meant too but yeah i guess (laughs) i don't know how that's possible that's how we recharge our batteries yeah yeah so i mean she's still partly part human organic you know so yeah um but I don't know where she's gonna go. Maybe she'll go get a job at a blockbuster. It's ninety four. So. She can no. She can she can be a project a projectionist. Oh, a projectionist. A projectionalist. A projectionalist. Yeah. Is that what he said? <laughs> a projectionist. No, he said like a projectionalist. Projectionalist. I think so. Yeah. Nice guys, watch it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that segment's great. Yes. The action and all that stuff is just a pure blast. Literally. Mm-hmm. Um, Super fun. And then we move into our final one, which is the redneck hillbilly like militia that wants to take out vampires. But at first, you're like thinking that they're gonna try to like overthrow the government or something. Like I didn't know where the hell we were going with this, um, but they kept shooting the same guy, so that kind of honed you in on something. Um, but. This is the weakest segment for me, mm-hmm. um, but I still liked it. I liked, I liked watching this guy get shot in the head a ton. I liked watching things explode. Like I'm a simple man who likes simple things. <laughs> Explosion, shooting. Yeah, these guys were total morons. Yeah. Um, you know, they're his whole religious rhetoric. Uh, I think it's just because it all hits a little too close yeah. to reality. Yeah, It's like, well, like, there's people like this all across this country right now who are total fucking lunatics. They're gun-toting, Bible-thumping, just out-of-control nonsense mm-hmm. coming out of their mouth, right and left, mm-hmm. conspiracy theories and everything. So all that felt, all that felt like uh, I, was, I was watching yet another fucking YouTube video wanting to pull my hair out. 
Um, and then they just kind of threw vampires in the mix. Yeah. Um, and we don't really, I mean, we don't really know much about anything. I, that building they were scouting, I guess, is where vampires I, live. So, I don't know. I thought that they were trying to still attack, like, some kind of government building, but that they were using the vampire and his blood as a weapon. Like, and so their whole thing was that they needed to do it during the day. Mm. Like, that was, because we thought, yeah, like, it does make it seem like they're attacking vampires, but then because we find out that the blood explodes in the daylight, that's why they're saying they need the daylight. So that when they go in, they can explode the building. I thought... At that, least that's what I was, think, was mm, thinking. Um, I, maybe. I mean, that makes sense to a degree. Yeah. I just thought that the people inside... But yeah, that would actually make more sense. Because why would vampires be living in some, in, you know, corporate building? building. Downtown. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, like, throughout it, they're talking about America and, like, it being horrible yeah their shit was so so stupid i I couldn't i was like zoning out when they were talking it was was like oh god i've listened to this too much lately yeah and then the sirens that kept going on i don't know what that was was that like because he was trying to escape or is that like or like how much time it takes for him to yeah like replenish his life that's what i was thinking so they could go back and shoot him you would think they could just put like a timer on in their pocket right. and have to go so out of control. And then the cops were helping him though. Like one police officer, yeah, he was like with Clinton in the White House. Like you've got a bunch of feds that are on your side, and I don't know. It was it was definitely yeah. the weakest for me too, aside from the wraparound that. Yeah, but it's, it, it's um, not a segment. <laughs> well, yeah, but so it was the saying. weakest segment for sure. Yeah. The vampire looked really cool though. The design of them was neat. I like that, like their whole chest and like mouth. Yeah, the vampire looks like, like um, opened up. Kind of reminded me of the strain, um, of the vampires in that. So yeah, it's cool. Uh, the look of the vampires, all that stuff, the exploding blood. You know, mm-hmm. using it as a weapon. I like mm-hmm. that idea. Mm-hmm. I think that's cool. Um, I mean, realistically, if they didn't kill them, though, wouldn't they just be turning a whole bunch of people into vampires, which would be formidable foes, especially since that they said they'd lose the sunlight for weeks? Yeah. Like, that's just, that seems like you're... I don't think... You're supercharging your enemy. Uh, yeah, I don't think that they're the brightest bunch. No, they're <laughs> I don't they're think morons. they were thinking that far ahead. They are morons, so... I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yokel militia. <laughs> uh, not the smartest people. No. Um... But yeah, so we're going to go see if any of this footage is usable. And uh, yeah, let us know what you thought about this, which is your favorite segment here. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you disagree with us and uh, say that the whole fucking thing is terrible, that works too. Let us know. And uh, we're going to talk about Squid Game now. Squid Game. Bye. Bye.